We start with Mayor John Giles of Mesa capping a busy two weeks. Welcome back to Square Off, sir. Graham, good to be with you. Thank you. You are one of 30 Republican mayors who lobbied for the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. You went on CNN to lobby for it. Yet every Republican member of Congress voted against it, including, of course, your own. So can you explain your vote to fellow Republicans? Graham, I don't know why people are viewing this as a, as a partisan issue. Uh, this is about emergency relief in the time of a pandemic. So uh, it's unfortunate that people want to, to, to act like there's a partisan issue at all involved here. Uh, local governments, including the city of Mesa, has been very involved in providing COVID relief. Uh, we very quickly, a, a year ago, switched to being a food bank, to, to being a, a partner with our school district to provide uh, online learning to help small businesses and restaurants. Um, and now we're very involved in putting shots into arms. Uh, and to, to think that you can eliminate local government from the, the newsflash that the pandemic is not over. So we need to continue to provide those services. We need to continue to give the resources to local government to uh, assist our citizens. So, and, and here's where you know conservatives would argue with that, I think. Uh, this, this bill is what's known as, this law is what's known as a Christmas tree. $1.9 trillion in spending, a lot of it has nothing to do with COVID. As a fiscal conservative, are you comfortable with that? Well, I, absolutely. I, I, I share concern about debt financing. The, the government, uh, you know, prints money and, and certainly our, our children and grandchildren are going to have to pay that off. Uh, the, the chairman of the Fed, uh, a lot of other people are saying we are in a, a dire circumstance and if we fail to respond right now, the economic impacts of, of not acting are going to be more severe than the debt that we're creating to address those needs, to keep people housed, to prevent homelessness, to respond to the health crisis, to keep people alive and, and fed and in their homes. So uh, I, I can't speak for what's all in the, the $1.9 trillion bill. I can tell you that the money that's going to state and local governments is going to be spent very wisely. Mesa has been a great steward of the federal money that we received last year. Uh, and we are this money is going directly to those who need it. And Mesa is getting $100 million uh, based on a document I saw. Is that correct? Yes, give it, yeah, right in that, in that neighborhood. We got $90 million under the CARES Act last year. I can tell you that uh, we we turned in receipts at the end of the year to the federal government for probably twice that much in COVID-related relief. Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, local government is the government closest to the people. This is where people are, are getting services. This is where part, we're, we're partnering with hospitals and school districts and, and food banks. Uh, and so if you, if you eliminate cities uh, from that equation, all of those services are really going to be compromised. All right, let's move on to the other news Mesa made in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the city council passed an anti-discrimination bill protecting lesbian, gay, transgender, and bisexual people. Uh, Mesa, third largest city in Arizona, the first city uh, led by a Republican mayor to do this. It took six years. Did you have to change personally your way of thinking about this to get to the point where you could vote for it? Uh, well, I, Bram, I'm, I think this is very much a generational issue. I, I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, and uh, back then, uh, homophobia was, uh, was the way that we thought. Uh, and so I think people in, in my generation absolutely have to uh, hopefully have evolved on this issue. Uh, for my children and grandchildren, it, it, it not nearly you know, the, the, the challenge that it was for those of us who grew up in a different day and age to, to wrap our heads around this. Uh, but it, once you have that aha moment and you, you realize that, that really this is just about treating other people the way we want to be treated, there really is never, has never been any legal justification for, for discrimination and for, for uh, thinking that civil rights apply to some and not to all. It, it's a pretty easy uh, uh, conclusion to come to. Now, I, almost as soon as this was passed, uh, Kathy Herod of the Center for Arizona Policy, who has opposed these kinds of laws for much of the last decade, uh, is now part of a group that wants to overturn uh, this ordinance. They are organizing a, a citywide vote. Uh, Kathy Herod, again, putting things up there, like this will allow men into girls' bathrooms. What would you say to Kathy Herod? You know, the, the reason that the city of Mesa took its time with this ordinance is because uh, years ago, five, six, seven years ago, when a lot of cities uh, were moving forward, there, there were still some unresolved legal questions having to do with 
with what do you do when there's a, a, a conflict with uh, with religious belief and uh, these types of ordinances and uh, how it impacts housing and employment in in the interim years uh, there's been u.s and arizona supreme court cases that have really clarified this so a lot of the ambiguity a lot of the the unanswered questions that that were legitimately being asked uh, several years ago those have now been resolved so all that's left now to, to fight against this ordinance is just throwing up uh, fear uh, that, that is not justified by, by, the, by reality. Uh, so uh, I get that people uh, are, are maybe uncomfortable about this because in previous years they weren't sure of, of how a lot of these legal issues were going to be resolved. Now it's clear. Uh, and so people need to not base their opinions on, on unjustified fear mongering. All right. Mayor John Giles of Mesa, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for the opportunity, Graham.